Hi everyone. Today is Friday, May 5th, 2017. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist here with the National Weather Service and this is the Utah Spring Snowmelt Briefing looking at the flood potential for Utah as of May 5th. Let's start with precip anomaly and we'll start from October, go all the way through the end of April and this is what the map looks like for the Colorado Basin and you see Utah in there, the far north especially around Bear Lake had two to three hundred percent precipitation from the beginning of the water year through the end of April but really a good chunk of the area was down in the hundred and fifty to two hundred percent with the remainder in a hundred and thirty to hundred and fifty percent you can see the Colorado Basin was less and southern Utah was a little less so what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus in on the Great Basin and this is where our highest flood threat exists as of May 5th today and you can see the areas, the farther north you go in Utah, the more the flood threat is apparent just because of the amount of precipitation and snowpack. When we look at the temperatures, and we'll start with February, and we had an incredible warm up in February. We were 15 degrees above average for the first part of February, and then things kind of mellowed out a little bit with the heat, but nonetheless, we were 3 to 5 degrees above in a, a good part of this, the state with the exception of far southwestern when we see March we see more of uh, Utah is, is warmer than normal. February and March were quite the warm months then we go to April and we see it was cooler over most of Utah with average conditions in the south and southeast which really helped us out. February and March the heat melted off the lower elevation snowpack and we've had comparisons to 1983 to where we are today and that's where I thought we'd look at when you look at temperature, and we're going to look at May 2017, we're only you know five days into this, really four days as far as we've collected the data. The blue line is 1983 at the Salt Lake City Airport, and kind of that mustard color is the average. When you look at what happened, in 1983 there were 22 days of below average temperature to start the month, and then what happened was there was eight days of above average temperature. The sun came out, it got hot, and when you think you're at the end of May, the sun's angle is really quite high in the sky, and we had melt going from low, mid, to high elevation all at once, and we caused all sorts of problems with flood threat. So now, let's look at snowpack, and we'll see where the difference is. The y-axis on this is snow water equivalent, x-axis is time. The green line is this year and the red line is 1983 and these are snow measuring stations operated by the NRCS below 7,000 feet and below so low elevation snowpack and the blue line is the average where these things should be if it was an average year what you see is we had a, a really large low elevation snowpack into early May and then it melted off when the heat came out we had three weeks in in I'm sorry, not May, but March. Uh, and the heat came on in March, February also, and melted off the low elevation snowpack. When you look at 1983 in the red, you see it lasted a month later. And it really wasn't as large as what we had this year, but we melted it off in March. And when you look at the low elevation in 1983, it was the second week of April that it started to melt off. And that's the difference between this year and 1983. We don't have the low elevation snowpack like we had in 1983. So that takes uh, eases the flood threat to a certain extent. However, if you go up to the top of Mirror Lake Highway, uh, Trial Lake has a snow tell station there, automated snow measuring station. This is the top of the Bear, the Weaver, and the Duchesne in the Uintas, you see that we're at 220% of median, whereas we're way higher than we were in 1983. The question is, is it going to start melting off now, or are we going to have more storms and more weather to keep it up as high as it is? So high elevation snowpack, much larger. Low elevation snowpack has much different from 1983. So this does cause us some concern. The mid elevation snowpack was melted off due to the heat to some extent, but it's still there. So when you look at the areas that we're anticipating that we may have flooding, I've done this aerially because these are the areas that when we do the peak flow forecast, the Logan River area, the Cache Valley area, uh, the upper Weber 
uh, to some extent a lot of the tributaries in these areas are projected to hit flood stage. The question is how about some of these other areas, Big Little Cottonwood um, in the Six Creeks area, Utah Lake, uh, these are all areas that could flood depending on what the weather does. But all things equal when we model the entire state of Utah, these are the areas that came out with the highest flood potential. This is going to change as we go through the, the spring weather. If it stays cool and wet and we bring the heat on like we saw in 1983, expect more of these areas to reach flood stage. If we get kind of an average condition and maybe an absence of any big rain events, then our flood threat is going to go away to an extent where we'll see high flows all year but no peak flows. So there you have it. There's my contact info. I'll be updating this weekly and then really as we get closer into later May uh, as conditions evolve. But I do thank you for taking the time to listen to this and until the next one we'll go from there. Thank you.